Hi there, today we're diving into the basics of DICOM networking. We'll be focusing on how connections are made following the DICOM standard. And I'm going to show you this by looking at an example of communication between two DICOM systems. Before we dive into this uh, details of DICOM association, I want to zoom out first and understand the broader idea. That's why I'm showing you here the TCP IP model. You might be familiar with TCP IP protocol. It's um, a suite of protocols. Each protocol is designed to fulfill specific functions and its broader goal it's, it's, uh, is to facilitate and to enable communication and data exchange across computer networks. So you can see here that um, this is uh, organized into layers with each layer assigned distinct responsibilities. You're using the same protocol here, the TCP IP model, in order to uh, access to YouTube servers for watching this video. So it's the common way of communication across internet. So you can see at the application layer here, we find, um, for example, here protocols like FTP used for exchanging text data. We can find SSH and Telnet used for remote control, SMTP used for exchanging emails, etc. And within this framework, we can also encounter here DICOM. And as we said before, DICOM is tailored specifically for the exchange of medical data. Okay. Um, so our, our goal here is not to study TCP IP protocol. Um, I want to just give you a broader idea so that you can understand and you, that you can position yourself and what we're, we are learning um, uh, regarding the, the global idea of, of TCP IP model. Now uh, let's zero in and uh, um, in, in, uh, on the ICOM protocol and illustrate uh, an example of communication so that we can understand that the the uh, networking concept of DICOM standard. Okay, so <coughs> let's imagine a scenario um, where a patient has completed his CT scan exam and the CT system would aim to store and archive the images in the packs. Okay, so we will have two systems, a CT scan and the packs. Okay, so uh, here, before sharing medical data, um, they initiate an association handshake. It's similar to the three-way handshake used in TCP protocol, and it's an initial exchange to set the stage for seamless communication and to ensure that both systems are on the same page about their identities and about the way they prefer to transfer medical data. Uh, so here in this setup, the CT scan, who's uh, by the way is that we call we call it the ECU in the DICOM language. ECU, it's equivalent to client, service class user, and the PAX is the SCP, the service class provider, which is the server. Okay. <clears throat> so the association will start by sending an association request from the CT scan to the packs association request okay and this request contains many information like the calling ae title that's how the ct scan identifies himself to pack system i'm going to say look i am for example let's give it a uh, name CT1, CT1 for example, okay, that's who I am, that's the source, that's the source, and then the request will include those, will include um, the called AE title, of course we have to precise the right destination of our uh, request let's give it an example for example packs one 
Okay, that's the destination. That's the destination and that's the source. And then the request will um, contain will contain uh, another very important concept, which is the presentation context. That's this presentation context includes two basic information includes the abstract syntax and the transfer syntax the abstract syntax is the what and the transfer syntax is the how okay so here, to understand what I mean, um, the city scan will send a list of presentation context, okay? And in each presentation context, we'll find the service that we want, the abstract syntax, the abstract syntax, and the transfer syntax, the way we want messages to be um, uh, sent and transferred between the two DICOM systems. The, <clears throat> let's give an example here. In our example, the abstract syntax or, or the service, the service that we want to use is to store CT images. Okay? The transfer syntax is the way we want these images to be stored, to be uh, transferred. Is it compressed, for example? Is it in compressed form? Like, I'm gonna mention here a very common example, the 2000 JPEG compressed files. Or incompressed, like Little Indian, for example. Those are types of incompressed file format. So here, the CT scan will send all this information, including a list of presentation context, presentation context one, presentation context two, etc., until till one hundred twenty-eight presentation context. That the ma that's the maximum, okay? And in this presentation context, we're gonna find the services that we want to use and the way we want data to be exchanged between the two systems okay so in pa in presentation context two we're going to find abstract syntax and the list of transfer syntax and then the packs will choose and will compare this information to um, its presets and it's going to send back a, a list including the supported um, services um the packs i'm gonna write it again here ct scan and the packs so packs will um review the ae titles and verify that the ae title matches his his one this packs one so we're going to understand that he's th that this request concerns him and he's going to also examine um the source AE title to ensure that communication is is permissible and uh, checking for any restrictions on that device. And next, the PAX examines the presentation context to understand the requirements of the CT scan. So the list that he would receive here, um, he will take this list and they will examine each presentation context in that list. And for each presentation context, it will assess its abstract syntax with the possible transfer syntax in the request and checking for the presence of these services, or it will check for the presence of its SOP class UID, SOP class UID. That's another DICOM word. 
and it's like a string of numbers like that 1.108.1000 etc so it's it's a string of numbers that are separated by dots and that are used within the standard to refer to services or to abstract syntax or to transfer syntaxes <clears throat> okay so it's um, you can find i'm going to show you here in the table <clears throat> you can see here these this is the sop class uid and these are the services okay for example the service that <clears throat> we want to use in our example here is the ct image storage and you can see the um it's sop class uid here that's the that's what Pax would would look for in in his uh, presets. So we're gonna take this SOP class UID. I said here that um, <clears throat> we're gonna send store CT image and actually gonna include the SOP class UID of that service. Okay, <clears throat> that's like. You can you can see it as the dicom word the dicom uh, way to say that i want this service you're gonna <clears throat> you're gonna send its um uid even for these um, ways of transferring data each uh, transfer syntax has its um equivalent uh, uid and here um the receiver which is the packs in this in our case um can look up the uid and as a result recognize which service is intended and then the the and then the packs response with the supported services for each presentation context and sends an association acceptance so here we're going to have an association acceptance of course you're going to include <coughs> you're going to send the message back in the same form a called AE title with a calling AE title. A call the call the AE title would be the CT1 in, in, in this case. And the calling is PAX1. And then you can include a list of supported uh, presentation contexts. So we're gonna include, for example, for PC one presentation context one. You're gonna say yes, I can store CT images. So the abstract syntax. Uh, you're gonna copy the abstract syntax that we sent with the um, the preferred way of transferring the data. So we're gonna choose, for example, you're gonna say, look, I can you can you can send data for me in a compressed 2000 JPEG file format. That's that's okay for me. That's what I prefer. And you're going to pick just one transfer syntax here and do the same for all the presentation contexts that he received. And then you're going to send back that list to the CT scan. If none of these uh, uh, presentation contexts were supported, you're going to just send an association reject. Okay. And look, uh, I'm sorry, I can't do actually any uh, service. Um, I can't help you. There is uh, nothing in that list that I can do, okay? And that's not that's not really um, that's not common, okay? Because here the CT scan <clears throat> will know that this is a PAX, and he will expect that a PAX that the basic function of of a PAX is to archive and to, to store images, okay? And the 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 ECU or the CT scan won't ask. A PAX about some services that that is not supposed to use, like work list services, which is used by the REST systems. So that's why the exchange won't be possible until the two parts agree on the services or uh, the functions that they would use and the way data is is supposed to be transferred. Okay. And by the way, if you wanna um, access the uh, if you want to access the services that are supported by any DICOM device, PAX or CT scan or any DICOM device, you, you can look for its conformance statement. It's like a detailed technical doc document um, companying most devices like uh, that, that 
that outlines exactly which features of the standard are supported and you can access it just by googling the conformance statement and um, including the name and the, the version of the device you want to 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 check and then you can you can find it really um, easily on internet okay so that's the conformance statement so once the association is successfully established the service class user and the service class provider can freely exchange message, messages over the connection so the next step that we're going to have here is the data exchange And when this process is um, complete, an association release request will be sent to the fax association release request. And then fax will send back an association release um, respond. Of course, through the exchange of data, or even before or after, it's possible for both sides to send an abort message. We can have an abort message dur during the exchange. Fax can send back an abort message saying, Hi, I don't want to store your images anymore. And that can happen because we can have some problems, some software problems that are going to lead to that um, abort, or even the user can... Um, stop the the the, uh, the exchange and and uh, terminate the association okay so um that's all for this video it's important to understand those terms abstract syntax transfer syntax sop class uid presentation context maybe in next video we can we can go to some uh, practical aspects of what we've seen today so hope that was useful to you See you.